The last one I'm going to talk about, not really a life-saving procedure, but a procedure that can be frustrating nonetheless if you're having difficulty, and ultrasound can help decrease or almost eliminate that frustration for you altogether. And this is another thing where we're going to use a static technique, and this may help us from neonates all the way up to elderly adults. So again, I mentioned this is a static technique. If the patient is a pediatric or very thin patient, we can probably use the linear probe. And what I want to say about this is we've got to get our transverse view of the spine first. And even before we do that, we want to get our patient positioned in the position we want for the lumbar puncture, because we want them positioned, then we want to mark them, and we don't want them to move, because if we mark them and then they move, our marks are going to be off. So position them first and then break out our probe. If we're using the linear, it's going to look like this in transverse. So the, we're going to see the spinous process and we're going to take note of how deep it is. Here it's very superficial and it's just going to be this little bony edge that casts a spike-like shadow down deeper into their tissue. Here we can see the transverse processes, but that's our spinous process. So we'll line that up in the center of our screen. If there's a center marker, we can use that. We can hit the M mode button and that'll drop a line right down the middle and then we'll just mark their skin with a vertical mark where the spinous process is. Then we can turn and look at the spine in a long axis and make sure the things we think are the spinous processes are at the same depth as they were in the transverse. Then we can line up two of them, find our space, line that up, and then mark it with our horizontal line. And then we should be able to put our probe down, prep, and successfully perform our procedure. Once I've done this, once I've marked it, I generally aim a little bit on the low side and then work my way up towards that spinous process. Lots of evidence that shows this will help us in difficult patients and even in patients that aren't difficult. There's been literature showing that we're still quicker, fewer sticks, more successful. Probably the most important thing about this is get that transverse view first to help you find your midline and to note the depth of the spinous processes. In larger patients, we may need to use a curvilinear probe. This is a pediatric patient. I'm not crazy about their body positioning, but that spinous process is going to look like that. Then we can get our longitudinal views and may look something like this. If we're doing neonates, we can pretty much see through their spine because their spine is going to be mostly cartilage. We know that this is too high up because here we can actually see the spinal cord. So we want to slide down a little more distally to where we're at the cotta and we have some nice spinal fluid pocket. And here we're all the way down even lower to where there's not much fluid left. In the neonates, we could actually if we use a nice sterile technique and a sleeve on our probe, we could actually real-time guide our needle into their CSF if need be. And you can look at this in long axis. We can see the cauda equina itself here. We see our spinal fluid. And here in this scenario, they've actually done a real-time needle guidance technique, which you can do. As kids get older, their spine gets more bony and starts to look a little bit more like adult where things shadow and we can't see through as well. A lot of the time, the reason we need ultrasound guidance is because we've got larger patients and their anatomy is not very palpable. So for those patients, we often need to use the curvilinear probe. So again, get them positioned, get your transverse view first. And with the curvilinear probe, things aren't going to look quite as pretty, but we should still see that spinous process coming superficially and making this spike-like shadow going down their back. We should see the paraspinal muscles or the tenderloins, as I like to call them, curving in towards the spinous process. We line this up in the midline using our center marker or a cursor or something, and then we mark their skin. And then we can also turn and get longitudinal views and mark this process as well. So that was a lot in a short amount of time. So in summary, all of our procedures are pretty much about a needle and a target and things we want to avoid. We've got techniques we can do statically or dynamically, and I hope we covered the fundamentals of those pretty well. Remember, if we're doing dynamic procedures, think about our needle with an in or an out of plane technique. Both are necessary for different scenarios. And then some of our targets we need to think about in a long or a short axis orientation, depending on the, the procedure and the target itself. And just overall, I promise you, once you've got a little bit of practice with this, your procedures are gonna be safer, they're gonna feel easier, and you may be able to expand your armamentarium of procedures that you offer to patients. So that's all for now. I hope it uh, was useful for you and I'll see you next time. Thanks.